This is your girl, Yannick Taylor, a.k.a. Priestess, hostess of Conversations with the Priestess. Here's a preview of what you may hear on Conversations with the Priestess. We weren't meant for monogamy, let's be honest. Like, we have needs, let's be real. And communicating that, what you want, what you don't want, what sets up... Now, this drink is brown, because I learned something. Since I'm older, I can't do brown liquor anymore. Also, I noticed since I started on hormone replacement there at HRT in 2015, me and certain liquors don't mix, don't mix well. I don't know whether. And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And because they're put on this pedestal of being leader, sometimes they want to be submissive. Back when I cosplayed a butch queen in South Carolina around 2011, I was on Craigslist. This is when Craigslist was bumping and before they had gotten rid of the personal section. I hope you enjoyed that preview. Join me on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Priestess After Dark. Full video versions of the podcast can be found on patreon.com forward slash CWT Priestess. And join me on Fridays at noon for our regular Friday post. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you download and stream podcasts. Hey, my royal priesthood. It's your girl, the priestess, and sometimes your mistress if you're nasty. Before we go into the intro and do all that fucking jazz, don't forget to hit that subscribe button or that follow button. Leave a comment and share. Also, trigger warning. I'm going to be discussing trauma and instances of abuse um, later on in the second half of the podcast. So if y'all can't handle that, please feel free to fast forward. I love y'all. Let's take care of your mental health. Y'all, let's enjoy this episode. Thank you all for walking with me on this journey of discovery. It's about to get delightful and explicit as fuck up in here. All right, let's work it up. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, the priestess, never your mistress, Shani Taylor. Honey, here's another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. So get your libations and get your ancestors and sit down and have a conversation with your girl. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your girl, the priestess, sometimes your mistress, Yannick Taylor. I'm absolutely loving how I have morphed that motherfucking saying. I'm embracing my more salacious side. And before I get started, y'all, I do apologize for the echo in the background. I am recording in my living room. Um, Yes, you heard that my own living room. I recently got my own place and I'm so fucking happy right now. And it's nothing like having your own space. Many of you all are aware of what happened. I suddenly found myself homeless last year. But thanks be unto the divine, I have my own space. And I am so grateful to those who have stuck by me um, that were greatly aware. Thank you to everyone that um, gave in my crowdfunding efforts. You all know who you are. Thank you all so much. And... I'm absolutely grateful for where I am now. So I'm celebrating, but I'm still getting settled in everything. So my setup is a little bit different, but I'm going to edit this down to where I really need it to be. Um, First and foremost, happy 2023. Happy 2023. And I am so glad retrograde is over. Praise be unto the ancestors, honey, because those last few days, Retro Mercury retrograde Molly whopped my ass, honey. She whooped my ass. And you know, the planets be fuck nigging a lot during retrograde. And I don't say a whole lot about this shit. But and I stayed rather quiet. But everything has been well since the last time I spoke with you all. I'm still healing, learning, living, laughing, writing music, and I'm so grateful um, for this time of respite. Um, so many changes have happened since I moved. Uh, <laughs> um, I have really just been on chill mode, to be honest. Um, I've gone out to some events, um, went to a couple of parties, 
Um, and I've actually gone to a couple of, I've done a couple of virtual events and I've met some new friends, some new associates, but I haven't really been like going out, 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 like doing clubs and stuff. Um, because I, I'm, I've recently moved. Um, I wanted to travel during Christmas, but because I moved the week before Christmas, it complicated a lot. And I'm so grateful. Um, my space is coming along well and my space is sacred. Now, sidebar, I got my place settled and put together right and I invited a friend over right <clears throat> and my setup is different right now. So I use a certain internet service that has benefited me well since I've had the service. This person asked that I invited over me and this person had been cut buddies for a minute and their energy was off that night for some reason. And me being the spiritual woman that I am, and yes, I am smoking a good juicy blunt while I'm recording this podcast. I am a very spiritual woman. And I tell people, stop bullshitting. Stop fucking around with spiritual women. Because we catch your bullshit. Their energy was off and I start looking at their countenance and his countenance was different. So I said, you know what? This is going to be my last time. But they saw who my internet provider was. And I was like, okay, cool, bet. But I was letting them use my Wi-Fi so they could, you know, cast what the movie we were watching to my TV, to my monitor. And they were like, oh, um, why is your password so long? That's the password it came with. And I'm going to use that. And I was like, number one, be grateful that I am allowing you in my space, but don't complain about my shit. Oh, uh, that, that turned me off from them completely. I don't like when I invite people into my space or into my domicile and they complain about something that I have set up for me. If you don't like it, keep that shit to yourself. That's a quick way for you not to be invited back to my space. Then they complained about my choice in music. And what I chose to listen to. And that was a big no, no. Mm, I don't like your energy. So needless to say, I had to clear their energy out of my space. And I'm like, you know what? I can't have any and everybody in my space because my space is my sanctuary. Okay. My space is my fucking sanctuary. I have worked hard to maintain a spiritual balance in my life. I have worked hard to maintain a, a, a certain atmosphere in my space and I don't need everybody's negative energy fucking with me on that for real like come on like come come down on that bro like calm down on that like for real and as a result I ain't fucking with that person no more like I'm like brother Duran I'm setting my boundaries if I don't you'll do it for me and that's the honest to God truth child uh uh-uh, uh no I said no mm -mm. you let me see why I don't need to be fucking with you And I am a very sexual person. Sex is normal. Yes, for those of you that see my spicy content, yes, I'm an OnlyFans model, content creator, and I'm going to talk about that later in the podcast. But that doesn't mean I want to fuck all the time. And I'm in a place now, I'm very selective at who I entertain sexually because that's an exchange of energy. I am not going to be fucking around with everybody and wondering why my spirit is fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm in a place now. Let me scope you out first. Let me chat with you. Let me let's look at our conversation. That's that's a new wavelength. I'm on child. Trust me. No, I can't be fucking around with everybody. But needless to say, that's one of the adventures that I've had. So now I'm all about keeping my space sacred for me, sacred to me. I've seen some rugs that I want to put up, especially in my living room to kind of muffle the sound. And I'm eyeballing and pricing some um, some uh, sound shields um, for myself and really looking at how to set up my space for me, particularly in my living room. Since I live by myself, you know, let me set up my place for me, you know, and. I'm avidly working on a lot of things right now. And I realize that it's taking time for me to do all of these things. And I'm taking it 
step by step. And I realize as I've consulted with divine, I'm in the right place at the right time because the things that I want to do for myself, for my life and me getting my own place, I realized it was imperative not for me not to be around the entities and people that I were around because they would have tried to take advantage of that for their own good. And I don't regret my decisions of letting go of people, places and things that were no longer serving me. Okay, even if it's family, if people and family ain't serving you, let their ass go. That's pretty much my energy in 2023. But in the creative sphere, I'm getting back into the creative space. I've I've battled depression like hell. Okay, I'm going to be real. Um, Depression, especially for me during the wintertime, is difficult because it's holiday season. And holidays are very triggering for me, especially when you've experienced losses of loved ones um, and things happen. And even with things that have happened on my birthday last year, renavigating how I celebrate my birthday. Um, Big ups for my birthday. I got my ticket to see Duran Bernard here at the Howard Theater on March the 5th. Y'all get your tickets. Go to DuranBernard.com. Get your tickets if you haven't. Your girl is going to be there. Right now, I'm putting together an outfit now that I'm going to wear because I'm planning. I am going to celebrate my fucking birthday, okay? My goal is to, um, I am going to visit my best friend in South Carolina and spend it with her. I'm so grateful um, to see my best friend. And it's, it's good to reconnect with friendships. And I'm grateful for those friendships. I'm grateful for my brother, AJ, who's a regular here on the podcast. My girl, Miss Black, you know who you is. You know, I am so grateful for the friends that I have in my life. And sometimes you don't really appreciate the people you have in your circle until the people that you thought were going to be a part of that system really fuck you over and do some foul shit. I've learned to appreciate what I have. They are my family. Yes, I have relatives that I bond with, but these are my family. Because since I've transitioned, my whole family structure has changed and it's rebuilding a network of family members. It's changing, okay? And I'm okay with the change and I'm having to accept the change and the changes that are coming along with me transitioning with me going forth in my music career and my adult entertainment career, okay? So this is where I've been. Now, with me getting settled, I have really rediscovered myself in so many different ways. And I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to make some announcements and we're going to jump back into the show. But we're going to talk about where I've been. I'm going to hydrate myself. So y'all live, love and be free. Smooches. Hey, what's up? Thank you all for your love and support of Conversations with the Priestess. I am really so grateful that you all are sticking with me. Here's where you can find me. Go in my show notes. You can find me on IG. Twitter, IG, you can even find links to my more salacious content. Now, please be respectful when you hit me up in those DMs. And if you have questions or ideas for the show, please hit my mail back up. That's talktopriestess at gmail.com. Everything is in the show notes. Live, love, and be free. Let's jump back into the show. Welcome back. Welcome back. Ah, y'all, I am absolutely in love with myself right now. So, before we go into the next part of this podcast. I want to give a big shout out to my brother, AJ Duro. Y'all can follow him on Twitter, King Duro. His information will be in the show notes. I love that brother. He is one of my favorite people and one of my best hype men. That is my bro. So he and I were talking a couple of days ago and if you know me and my brother's relationship, we are major music heads and we absolutely love the Clark sisters. And he reminded me of a video that I had up on YouTube when in my crazy man, zero six, eight, six days, this was pre transition. And for those of you that have been riding with me since the beginning, I thank you all. So he reminded me of this video. He said, you know, Yannick, I used to watch your video of you singing the Clark sisters, nothing to lose. 
I said, yo, I don't even know if that video was still up. And I looked for that video on YouTube and I pulled it up and we looked at some old videos of myself. I wasn't triggered, but it was just looking back at my musical gift and how far I've come. And it was so funny because AJ and I met in 2015 through the church we were a part of at the time. And we talked about how uncanny it was that he watched my videos and we finally met. And he and I have worked together in music and in ministry for the last seven plus years. And I'm so grateful for my brother, AJ. And he and I are going to be doing some great things together. So be on the lookout. So, and I'm so grateful for the gift of music. And that's how I really got my start on social media is through music. I used to do covers on YouTube. Um, I used to do Phyllis Hyman covers, gospel covers, all types of covers. But also I was real careful at what I posted because I was also doing Xtube videos at the time. And I had started making money off of my videos, but I never showed my face. And I did this up until 2021. And I finally started showing my face. Y'all that know me know the story. But, and I always felt like me loving to do adult entertainment conflicted with music until I saw a couple of people in adult entertainment doing music, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me do me. But that's a whole nother story for another day. That's an area I'm still navigating. And I was on the phone with AJ one night and I started singing about me being a singer, a songwriter who happens to be transgender and a porn star. And yes, I love doing music. That's my claim to fame doing music. Y'all seen my TikToks, but yes, I have a salacious sexual side that I absolutely love being on display. And I hit that side for me and I felt like it conflicted. And that's an area I'm still navigating, but I absolutely love it. But I want to talk about my experience in uh, doing sex work, in doing adult content, which I've been doing since my college days. Um, actually, um, I started out doing Xtube as an amateur. I had several different names and I'm not going to start calling different names, but if you are listening to this podcast and you remember the nautical star, y'all, I've come a long way since then. And I've had other names, but I started doing videos then and I would go through my periods due to my involvement in Christianity where I would feel so guilty about it. And I wrestled with that until I left the church officially in 2021 going into 2022. And I started showing my face and I stopped giving fucks. And that's when I really started generating the revenue that I desired. And I, it started out as a fun thing. But when times got rough, actually here in D.C., it turned into a mode of survival and I, it took the joy away from it. And I took some time away. And um, when I met the guy, Don Prophet, as I talked about in Diary of a Church Girl, he shamed me so much, yet applauded me at the same time to where I said, you know what, let me renavigate my whole sexual life at this point. And that's where I've been in the last year and some change. And I've I've come to the place of doing adult content because I enjoy it. It's, I fucking enjoy it. I'm an ex- I'm an exhibitionist and I love it. And because I'm no longer religious, I'm more so spiritual. It has helped me a lot to grow. And in me going to therapy and healing, I've understand I now that a lot of my kinks are from trauma and it's re, me renavigating sex and sexuality and healing and all of that thing, all of that stuff. And also, I must admit, I must ad, ad, go into detail that I've worked as a phone sex actress, a phone sex operator, a uh, phone sex girl, as you call it, um, PSO. I've done that for years. Um, I remember being, when I lived with my uncle, like he had no idea that, well, I believe he has an idea that I was doing something, but yes, I was doing phone sex work in between jobs and that's still a staple for me and now I've graduated to actually working and exchanging pictures and making the content 
Um, even doing naked vlogs, I've also dived into doing nudist content now. And I'm finding balance in the content. So sometimes on the conversations with the priestess channel, I might see some nudist content. It's going to have a warning and all of that. So, you know, I am being myself and being authentic to me as I felt all along and using my intuition and also renavigating spaces as a trans woman now that I navigated in my butch queen days that now I'm able to navigate differently. And it's a whole different world now. Because I'm of the mind now, if you're going to fetishize me, motherfucker, you're going to motherfucking pay me. Bitch, you better have my money. Pay me what you motherfucking owe me, honey. No, we're not playing that game. And not saying that I'm only doing it for the money. No, I love doing it. And I love what it brings me, you know. And I'm using all of my gifts. It's called duality. Now, one of the things that I have had to happen, and I'm really leery about because I am doing adult content, I stopped doing in-person things as far as escorting. I no longer do that because now people will recognize and people will recognize you on the street from doing adult content and they feel that they have access to you, that they can just hit you up and you send them whatever. No, nigga, have your cash app ready. No. Don't hit me up with that. That's what I I no. Don't hit me up on my music shit. No, I'm gonna redirect you or block you. Mm mm. And I've had people ask to collab with me for a free fuck. It don't work like that. So renavigating that and getting wiser. And also sidebar, I've had men actually want to network with me on this here podcast. But they end up wanting to fucking sleep with me. Stop that shit. Just because you see me on OnlyFans don't mean I'm the same person in the street. That's a persona that I put on. That's my sexual. That's my sex thing. If you follow me on any other outlets that are adult, you know what name I go by. Now, I do want to give a tip to my babies that's doing OnlyFans. Please watermark your shit. Watermark your shit. Watermark your shit because people like to rip your shit from OnlyFans and Sherry. Thank you for the free publicity. But also, y'all, stop screen recording people's shit and reposting it. Don't do that shit. Support them people, okay? Support the people. Get that referral fee, honey, okay? Shit. And as a musician, I don't do free work. Don't ask me to do free shit, and you know I do adult content. And that's a, that's a big breadwinner for me. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about my kinks on Patreon. So that's something else that I'm doing. So y'all work with me here. But I must say there are periods where I take off from doing content, um, from showing my face on camera right now. Because right now I, I'm scheduling my facial feminization surgeries. As we speak, it's, it's a process right now for me, <clears throat> and I want to get it done by a certain point in this year. And I'm so grateful for life happening, but there are days where I get very, I'm just going to say it like this, gender dysphoria is a bitch, okay? Gender dysphoria is an ungrateful, nasty little bitch, okay? Couple that with depression bitch you have a whole war in your hands now let's talk about gender dysphoria gender dysphoria be showing up out of nowhere and she just be like bitch i'm here i go to bed feeling pretty and prissy especially when on the days where yes i've had laser um hair removal but i still have to shave for right now i have my next treatment in february and if you want to contribute um, I have the means to do so. Y'all hit those links in the show notes, okay? Help a hoe out. So, or if you like the freaky shit, hit my OnlyFans up, okay? Links are in the show notes, okay? Shameless plug. So, I ended up, anyway, um, it's like I go to bed feeling pretty, and then I look at myself, and bitch, dysphoria is like, bitch. Really? You was giving it what's going on now? And right now, I actually need to get my hair done because I've been wearing wigs 
And that's getting done soon. And I'm getting my nails done. Even if I have to use press on nails, honey, because I'm a hole in a budget, okay? I just moved. I'm going to use press on nails if I have to do what I got to do, okay? I'm going to learn how to do my own nails. I'm going to get my own wigs and do them myself, okay, bitch? It's a process. But it's so much. It's a demand to look pretty for the cameras all the time. And sometimes I don't feel it. Sometimes I don't, you know. And in those times of dysphoria, I lean more into my music and my nudist content, but I put on makeup and use the wig that I have right now. I will refurbish some of my old wigs. I'm being real. And I have a wig now that I'm actually, I want to get it installed, but I'm actually going to watch tutorials to learn how to do it and do it myself and let my bestie help me. So that's, that's something that I'm going to do for my birthday. But baby, I've been rocking natural hairstyles and people tend to like that a little bit better. And you know, niggas like what they like, you know, but hey, I love to give fantasy, but that's one thing about being someone who does adult content, it wears on you sometimes and you have to take a break and refresh. And with depression, I'm going to meet that bitch out in the parking lot one day and I'm going to whoop her ass because the bitch is making on my fucking nerves, okay? I've been doing good and then depression hit, but also I must say that um, my family did experience a loss a few weeks ago and... It rocked me a little bit because it was um, a reality that hit. This is my grandmother's sister. And now there's only one sister of that lineage left. And it's a sobering reality. And it put a lot in perspective for family, um, particularly since I've transitioned and my family structure has greatly changed and relationships have changed. And that has taken a toll as well. Thank God for medication. I take my SSRIs and do what the fuck I have to do. So, bitch, I've been resting and I've ran into some things where my body had taken a hit and I've been recuperating from that as well um, because I decided to wear myself then. And I know AJ is listening. Don't you say shit. Anyway, (laughs) I, I really have been resting this time and really setting up my apartment. And it's taken me a month to do a lot of things because I've been depressed. And it gets heavy as fuck sometimes. It gets really heavy. You know, but thanks be unto y'all that always causes me to triumph, okay? Honey, I tell you. And throughout this, um, it has allowed me to reconnect with my spirituality in such a great way. Um, With my spirituality... Since I've left Christianity and organized religion, I've really gotten into tarot and studying astrology, and I've started studying other means of spirituality. And I've really been on a new path, and I've been deconstructing my religion. I threw an engraved Bible that I had away, and I bought me a new Bible because I wanted to break the connection and redo things myself, but I'm not a religious woman. I I'm studying the Bible from a different perspective at this point. And that is playing in how I view sexuality because growing up in the church as a queer trans child, you're taught a whole different thing from the cis heads. Okay, honey, you're not able to be taught about queer sex in the church, but then renavigating sexuality being in the affirming church which being in a gay inclusive church that tried to go mainstream and finding out it was very transphobic fucked with me. And that gave me the fuck you to church and dealing with a sociopath as a bishop fucked me over. Mm, And I call my power back as I sit here on this podcast. I call my motherfucking power back. And at this point, let me come back. But at this point, That has played a role in me renavigating my sexuality. And as I mentioned, under um, healing from a trauma that I experienced during the summer where I was with a guy that ended up getting very homophobic and transphobic and it became uncomfortable. And I'm unpacking that still in therapy and unpacking some childhood traumas regarding sexuality as well. And in the sense of me 
being found out of having engaged in sexual acts with someone at that time of the same gender. I'm just going to say of the same sex. We had the same parts and how I was forced to pray the gay away, how that scarred me in terms of sexuality and reworking all of that. um, That has really done a lot for me as a queer trans person and Ooh, it's getting heavy and that's where I'm at in renavigating my sexuality now with that being said no I am not doing adult content out of trauma so you can go fuck yourself with that now I am sick and tired of some things that people say about us that do adult content I'm gonna take a quick break we're gonna refresh ourselves so y'all sit back relax let love and be free we're gonna be right back don't you know that God specializes God specializes Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> that track that you heard is yours truly. Um, that is a cover of um, a great classic gospel tune by the Roberta Martin singers, classic hymn called God Specializes. I did the song about, ooh, I, it, that's been about 15 or 16 years ago. I did that in college. I used um, Garage Band, I did the drum pattern the organ and the keys the lead and background vocals that is the scope of my work um right now all that i use right now is mixcraft and sometimes fl studio i'm working on upgrading my equipment which again is one of the reasons why i love my making my money at my job and doing my only fans to upgrade my equipment and that's not the only reason i do it like i said i do it for fun but anyway uh, that's just a little bit of my work so but let's jump back into the show so I talked about being an adult content creator and there are things that I experience and things that I see on social media one of the things I see are people who always have this idea that people who do adult content that that's the only thing that they're doing as if they don't have a nine to five or as if they don't they may have fallen on hard times or that that we may not be living a livable wage. And I had a former pastor tell me and ask me rather, why did why did I do sex work? And I told him I said, "Well, right now times are tough. This pandemic is whooping our asses, and I'm trying to survive in these streets." And I don't think he comprehended because he was like, "Well, you have a support system. Well, the support system was failing me, okay? But anyway, that's another story for another day." So, in this, I learned that people always have these preconceived notions without actually sitting down and listening. They listen to respond. But a lot of us, we're doing this for survival. There are some of us that are doing it out of pure luxury and out of pure fun. And if you, it's, it's great to be able to do that as a luxury, but that's how a lot of us started. And... For some of us, that it's been just a start. And I look at Miss T.S. Madison, how she started. And now I'm not comparing myself to her at all. I'm not trying to be her protege at all because I started with music first. So don't try me. Try Jesus. Try an edible, not me. But she has been an example of being sexually liberated and free and showing how just because that's where you at don't mean that's where you have to be. I don't intend on doing adult content for the rest of my life, okay? I love doing it, yes. I love doing it. And if I happen to dabble in it a little bit or do some production, fine, whatever. But also, being an, an adult content creator, people stretch those boundaries. And it's always playing it safe, even when you collab with people, because... I've had people hit me up on social media saying they saw me out and about and that I look different and analyze me. I'm like, number one, that's creepy. You could have kept that. Um, Okay. Even I don't post certain social media posts with any geotags. Okay. Only if I'm at a certain event, I'll do it after the fact. But it's all about playing it safe because 
out here for black trans women, the world is cruel to us, honey. Okay. And then as an adult content creator, you have people that will literally sit there and talk shit about you, about you being trans, but then they're actually subscribed to your OnlyFans content. And that'd be the funniest shit to me. That is always the funniest shit. And, you know, I don't even hold it against them. I move on and live my fucking life, honey. Because what's the use in doing fuck shit to other people? I'm not going to even expose it. So, because you expose yourself. But when you get rowdy, I'm going to let you let it be. No, look, you might want to be careful because look here, I got receipts. No, I would never do that. I would just block that person, to be honest. And there are times where I've had to actually block subscribers because they were very disrespectful. No, 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 no. And it's all about safety for me. No. And one of the things I want people to understand about us that do adult content, we're not always thinking about sex and not everyone is doing the craziest things. Now, me, I won't do public play. I'm sorry. No. Because. Baby, you can catch a charge for that. There are certain things I will not do, especially for OnlyFans, honey. No, ma'am. No. Mm Mm-mm. Just certain things you don't do. And I'm not judging people that do public play. Yes, it's fun to watch. But mm, use some kind of discretion. Do that in the appropriate places where y'all can get away with that. You know what I'm saying? But, like, people think we're just sex things. We're not. We're not. And people think, that we're actually going to do any and everything with everybody. No, certain things that I do in my private life, I'm not going to show you on the camera. That's just plain and simple. And certain things, um, I've actually had to set boundaries with the content that I do and the type of calls. I've had people ask me to do race play. I've had people for me to do age play. I don't do that. I know certain depictions I won't do because that's not what I do. Um, And I have my limits as to what I do. And just because you see me doing adult content doesn't mean I think I'm better than anyone. We don't think we're better than anyone. We're selective, okay? Who I fuck with offline is different than who I would collab with at certain points. Now, there's something I'm going, if I'm going to collab with someone, there's going to be certain things that I like about them that I'm attracted to. I cannot, I can't be unattracted to you and try to do content it doesn't work like that you know let me fill you out first you know let me fill out your vibe let's you know you know get to know each other in certain ways and have a discussion and maybe play around you know i'm just being real and that's what goes into being an adult content creator it's not just for the moment no Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it don't work like that So you're getting a little bit on the podcast of what it's like being an adult content creator. Now, me right now, I'm doing mostly solo content until I find a a good person to do content with, you know. And I'm experimenting in different areas and I'm okay with where I'm going in this life. So, but that being said, I'm going to shut my fucking mouth and I'm just going to live. So thank y'all for listening to me rant and rave. I know y'all can see a change in how I'm talking. I I am very mature. I'm just being real about the things that I do. And if it's crass, work with me, okay? Bye-bye. Y'all love them. Be free. Smooches.